what an awesome God we serve. Such a loving God. Such a loving God. His, his love is just flowing through here this morning. We just thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, welcome to Rapture Worship Center. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. The word of God says, God gave us some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. If you are looking for a church where you can develop, come grow with us. Now for our weekly announcements. Our services are live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at raptureministries.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you need prayer, text us at 79. The text pray to 797979. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, I know you're ready for the word this morning. You came hungry for the word. So before Pastor Anna comes, please make sure that your phones are turned off or muted. Now, here's Pastor Diana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Come on, I am changing every day. The word and the anointing is changing me. Nothing has ever overcome God's word. I'll tend to the word first before anything else. I search the word for every promise that covers my situation. I keep the promises before my eyes in my ears, in my mouth, and in my heart. I am committed to victory, and I refuse to give up. I count on the word and the faith that comes from it to do everything that God has called me to do. I am identical with Jesus. I am identical with Jesus. I look just like him. I act just like him. I talk just like him. And things respond to me the same way that they responded to Jesus. Because one day, I decided to change. And change, and change, and change is very good. Well, give God a shout of praise before you're seated. Glory to God. Just giving everybody an update on Dr. Davis. He is home, as you can see, but he is doing okay. He's been uh, in quite a bit of pain with his right foot, and um, so he has an appointment on Thursday and Friday. They may do some outpatient surgery, but he's going to be fine. Hallelujah. How many of you know that? God is still working. So we're not, we're not alarmed or afraid. In the meantime, we are here. Glory to God. And we are standing on the promises of God. And you know, he was, he was so angry because he said, the moment I open up my mouth to talk about healing, look what the devil did. But see, that's why we know. And I'm just, I tell you what, we are both fighting together. Amen. And I know y'all backing us up. Glory to God. You're praying for your man of God. And that is absolutely right. That's the thing to do. Well, this morning, we're going to continue. Um. On last Sunday, we talked about how that the way we think, you know, uh, it's the, it has, that our issues are not necessarily a spirit man issue. It's our mind. It's a soul issue. Remember that? And Jesus said, if you got a mind like a snake, it's impossible for you to try to announce good things on yourself or anybody else because the way you think your mouth going to talk. Mm. So this morning we're going to talk about what you see is what you get. That used to be an old phrase. And I am still very young, but that was back. Y'all try to take it in this new age, but you know, y'all can't work it. 
We, we started it. What you see is what you get. Now, you, you say what you see, and you see what you say. I'll say it again. You say what you see, and you see what you say. Turn to Mark 11. I know you know this, but that's all right. We're going there anyway. Mark 11, we're going to start at verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus being hungry. Now, if you're anything like I am, when you are hungry, inside you see what you want to eat. Sometimes you might be a little mixed because you got a variety to choose from. But Jesus saw the fig tree from a distance and desire, said desire. Because when you're hungry, desire, look, when you see the food or you think it's food, you want to eat. And seeing, listen, verse 13, and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Now, see, it make it seem like Jesus was trying to rush this tree, that it wasn't time for the tree to have figs, when that's incorrect. We used to raise fig trees. Whenever the leaves came out, figs was underneath. That's the, that's the routine of a fig tree. And when, you, when the leaves are out, and especially when they're long and green and really plush, there should be ripe figs underneath the leaves. Jesus went to it, and he didn't find anything. So Jesus made his own announcement. Jesus answered and said unto it, Jesus talking to the tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So you see what you say. I mean, you, you say what you see, and you see what you say. So we see that Jesus had an image on side of him about the figs. He had to have the image in order to want it. Oh, Jesus. You see, y'all, y'all, see y'all, y'all play with your imagination so much you don't know what you be thinking and, and doing. Watch this. Now let's go down to verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now see, Again, Jesus announced in verse 14, he says, nobody's going to eat fruit from you from this day forth. Jesus saw the image of the tree being dead, so he said what he saw. And he got what he said. You got to hear this. Jesus did this all through his ministry. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, Behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. They were alarmed as though what Jesus said wasn't going to happen. How many of you have heard the word and then you get alarmed if something actually happened? See, because you don't have the whole picture inside of you of the end results yet. Mm. Because it's not about timing. It's not even about if it can be done. It's the image inside of you of it being done. And Jesus answered, said unto them, have faith in God or have the kind of faith that God has. On the, in other words, he says first, say first, have faith in God's ability and not your own ability. See, that's where we got to put all of our faith in God's ability. And Jesus did it. Jesus didn't have any qualms whether or not the father would act on his behalf and, and take care of the tree. Jesus said, I only do what my father, what I see my father do, and I only say what I hear my father say. So somewhere he must have heard the father say, curse it. And he saw the tree dying. And guess what? It died. Here you go. For verily I say unto you, now he's talking to you, say he's talking to me. The whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what mountain? Whatever your mountain is. Whatever your mountain be, debt, sickness, relationships, children, money, whatever. He says, that whosoever shall say, now that means I got to do some talking. And I'm not talking about my situation. I'm talking to it. You got you to know that you can see, we tell everybody our business, but we're not talking to the situation. 
So our situation haven't heard God on this yet. It's heard you talking about it, and it say, yep, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm staying right here, too. You keep right on talking about me. I'm big, and I'm bad, and I know I'm bad, and I'm going to get worse. Because you're glorifying me. You're picking me up. You are raising me up above God. That's what you're saying. See, you got to be accountable for these words. Remember that? We talked about every man going to be accountable for what he says. He said that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt. Now that word doubt is, I know we, we think we know it, but it said, and you shall not become unsure or indecisive or lack conviction. So in the time of the test and trial, he says, there's the mountain. Now what you're going to do, you're going to lack conviction, you're going to be unsure that it can go when you speak to it. See, because you got to know that when you talk to it, it got to move. Because this is not Jesus talking. This is you talking. Oh, goodness. Hallelujah. Come on. This is not Jesus talking. This is you talking. And he says, and you shall not become unsure, indecisive, lack of vision in his heart or his chamber of creativity. That heart is talking about where you imagine everything that you do in life. You can't even see yourself going home if you don't have a picture of it inside of you. You know how to get home because you got the image, say the image, on the inside of you. And it's so deeply intertwined with your life that you can tell people how to get to your house from all different directions. Because you know how to go home. Because you know where home is, right? Ooh, Jesus. That's the kind of conviction Jesus is talking about here. He's not talking about this hope so. I, I think so. I, I wish it would. No. He's talking about where you are fully persuaded remember Abraham he became fully persuaded mm. and he was fully persuaded in his chamber of creativity in the inside of his image he saw he saw Sarah having Isaac he saw himself being the father of many nations Ooh. But shall believe, let's keep, let's go back again. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, become unsure, indecisive, lack conviction in his chamber of creativity, but shall believe. Now believing is seeing. So, but shall keep on seeing, because believing is seeing. If I believe it, that's, I believe it because I see it. So it's better, it's to your advantage to stop and get the, the picture from the word so you can get the right image that you need to put inside of you so that when you start talking, it'll begin to build what you say. Mm. Watch this. That those things which he saith, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Ah, why he going to have whatsoever he saith? Because he kept right on believing. He kept right on seeing the image. So in, in my um, book, I have a book where what I call my dream book. How many of y'all know I talked about that dream book? In my dream book, I got certain articles that I want to see in my home. That I, I, that I said, okay, some things have already come to pass, but some things I'm looking at. But you know what? You go back and you look at it because you want to keep the image fresh. And you go back and you look at it. And sometimes you, you drift away and a couple of days may go by, and then I got to go back and look at it again. Why? I am renewing my mind to the image of what I say I am believing for. 
Mm. Look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. When you pray, you got to see it. See, if you put believe and then put in parentheses next to believe, keep on seeing you get the right image of what you need to hear. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, keep on seeing, keep on seeing that you receive them. Keep right on seeing the image, not the words. Now I'm going to tell you how to translate the words into the image because we'll say a lot of words, but we still don't have the image. Ooh, Jesus. And the image is the only thing that create the picture, that create the product, not just the words. Watch this. Once again, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, keep seeing what you say, that you receive them, and you shall have them. So not just believe the words you are saying, but believe for the thing. See? So my believing has got to become to the place. And so if I'm believing for the thing, that means in my chamber creativity, I have downloaded this picture. I got a picture of my grandbaby, and it's downloaded on my phone. And he getting ready to be my, uh, what you call it, my page, whatever, when you turn my phone on. But I've downloaded the image of him. Why? Because whenever I turn my phone on, I want to see my grandbaby. You know why? Because that keeps me close. And all I do is look at his handsome face and say, that's Grandma Sugar. You, that's what you have to do. If you're not creating an atmosphere so that the image can be downloaded, now you have to say words. Say, I have to say the word. Say it again. Say, I have to say the word. That's why I made the statement that you what? Somebody repeat it for me. You say what you, and you see what you say. See, you say what you see, and you see what you say. So if you don't say anything, you'll never see it. <laughs> if you don't say anything, you'll never see it. I don't mean manifest. It just, it's not going to manifest. You'll never see it here in your chamber of creativity. Because the word is designed to go in and construct an image, not just words. Believe the word, but the word is designed to build and not just to stay words on a page and not just to stay in affirmation. The word is supposed to be building an image in you. Because that's what that word is designed to do. It's supposed to go in and construct an image. Ooh, Jesus. So we're not just saying the words. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So we're not just going to believe the words only. We got to believe until the image is constructed. Because we'll say the words four or five times a week, and then we think we got it. No. Because if something come against you concerning that issue, and you get rattled, and you get fragile, and you fall apart about it, your image has not been structured yet. Because when you see yourself debt free, I don't care what kind of bill you get, it doesn't rattle your cage. Because the image is alive. Because the word is in there working. And that image is alive. And the life of God is pumping through the image. Ooh, Jesus. Mm. He says, not just believe the words you are saying, but believe for the thing. We ought to take the word of God and paint the picture of the thing being asked for in our spirit. See yourself with it. 
when it ceases to be just words, it's a lie. Oh, glory. Mm. You don't even imagine yourself without it. You, you don't even see yourself with anything else but that. Now, ladies, I'm not trying to put you down, but remember when you like that bow-legged guy with the curly hair or that guy that had the pretty smile or whatever he had, you were not happy until you got to know him. And you made it your business. <laughs> mm. Men, you know how you did it. You like somebody you saw, and you said, I believe I'm going after her. You said it. Mm. Now watch this. Now, now here's the clincher. Then go and do a commensurate action to prepare for its arrival. Go and do something that shows your faith to prepare for its arrival. You know, when um, I was believing for furniture, when we first got married, I, I had some really, really cheap furniture. And, um, <laughs> and I was believing God for a new set of uh, living room furniture. So the first thing, you know, at that time I was not as, uh, you know, I was not as well rooted in the word as I am today. And my husband said, why don't we just give this sofa away? And I said, have nothing in the front room? He said, it's like having nothing anyway. He said, <laughs> <laughs> when you said that you had to sit on the outside and you sat in the middle, you know, you went down. So he said, give it to the Salvation Army. He said, don't give it to nobody we know because they're going to talk about you. <laughs> and he right. Don't give your trash to people because they're going to talk about you. A life lesson. So we gave it to the Salvation Army. So for a little while, there was nothing in my front room but the glass coffee table. But every day. So once a week, he would take me out to the furniture store where I saw what I liked. And I would look at it. And at first he said, we're just going to buy the couch. But I saw the accent chair. And I said, the couch going to be lonely. We need the accent chair too. <laughs> and I kept going back and looking at it. And I would come back home, and what little I knew about God, I knew God was faithful. I said, now, Lord, I want this mint green furniture. How many have been in my house and saw that mint green furniture? I gave that furniture away and sold it as a seed into another family in, the, in, in uh, Victory Life. Why? Because God blessed us with that, and I mean, it was so, and I kept it. You know why? Because I believe God gave it to me. I kept it up. Man, but I got it because I saw the image. I said what I wanted, and I got what I said. Mm. So we ought to take the word of God and get that picture down on the inside. If you're dealing with some health issues in your body, then you need to get that image down to you to the place of where you don't see nothing but healing. You see yourself doing the laying on the hands of sick for somebody else. You don't describe yourself as being sick. Come on. You don't see yourself as being broke. Ooh. You don't see yourself as almost losing your mind. Come on. We're going to go and do a commensurate action. We're going to go and prepare for its arrival. That means whatever I got to do to get God to bring that into my life. Okay, maybe I need to stop doing this and do that. Maybe I need to change what I'm doing in relation to my finances. Maybe I need to get some more education before this thing show up. Do it. Why? Because you got expectation. Why? Because you see it. You see yourself with it. Hmm. See, God had to do the same thing. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. That's where we get our picture from. That's where we get our example from. God had to do the exact same thing. Look at verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I can't tell you how many times Dr. David had taught from this passage. He says if you can understand the first three chapters of Genesis, you can understand the whole Bible. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, 
And God said, let us make man in our image. So that means God must have saw something. He could see himself anyway. Don't you know what you look like? Or you like the man over in James that go and look in the mirror, then you walk away and forget what kind of man you are. <laughs> he says, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. So God says, I'm going to give them my image, and they're going to do stuff just like me. So God saw us before he made us. Mm. And he got what he said. He says, he told, he looked, he said, look, we're going to make this man, which is spirit, we're going to make this spirit in our image. It's going to look just like me, it's going to act just like me, and it's going to talk just like me. Ooh, Jesus. And guess what? The Father God saw you doing that before he ever picked up the dirt and made Adam. He saw you being a living spirit. He saw you capable of doing everything that he did. <laughs> and he still does. He sees us having the same ability to talk just like him. Ha <laughs> glory. Isn't that good? Ah, hallelujah. I can remember when I first started making handkerchiefs. The first one looked like a lopsided picture, man. But I was so proud of that thing. You, you see, when you get frustrated when you're trying to get something done and you're spending money and people still don't do what you expect them to do, what they say they can do, and I kept, you know, I would even go buy the fabric and give it to the person and ask them because I didn't want the cheap fabric they were using. Because if you hold it up in the light, you can see clean through it. And I'm going like, and if you wash it, it's ripped. And I would buy this expensive broadcloth. And I said, this is what I want. And they would make me one, and then they keep my fabric. <laughs> but I would buy enough fabric to make six, seven of the same thing. All kinds of colors. So, you know, one day out of frustration. See, when you get tired of your environment being the way it is, you're going to go inside and change the picture. You, you, you're not going you're not gonna to keep messing with that stuff out there. You're going to go inside and change the picture. Because you want a different outcome. Ooh, glory. So, I went and I, I took homemaking in the ninth and tenth grade probably and y'all know that's been some years ago right but I decided I'm gonna make this handkerchief and I sat down and I cut it and I put that lace on it and they will always give me this little skinny lace I'm going like they must have found the cheapest lace in the store that it, it, it was sometime it was just barely a half an inch <laughs> I like lace. I wanted my handkerchief to stand out. I didn't want that little cheap lace hanging on the edge of my handkerchief. And you go there, hold it up, and it looked like it, it disappeared. I got this image on the inside. And you know what I did? I kept working at it. And then one day, my edges started getting sharper and better. And I began to perfect it. Why? The image was on the inside. I saw myself doing this. And guess what God did? He used my husband. He said, he said, baby, you're doing this so good. You need to turn this into a business. And then I'm going like my alarm go. I said, I ain't got time for no business. Blah, 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 blah. We got these children. And then the Spirit of God said, you better start a business. With something that I saw myself doing. And I say it, I say it, and based on what I say it, and based on what I saw, I still have a business. Ooh, and getting better at it all the time. See, you never stop perfecting what you see, but you got to start seeing what you say, so you can have what you see.
and God blessed them. So look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful. That's not talking about babies right there. He says, be productive and multiply your productivity. Get a vision, not a television. Get a vision. Get a vision from God and put it inside of you. Some of you have dropped some of the things that God had put in you a long time ago because life did all kinds of tricks to you, and you thought God was, was stopping you from doing that. Go get the vision and pick up and run with it. Make it alive inside of you again. See yourself doing that thing. See yourself living in that house. See yourself driving that car. See yourself wearing the best. See yourself healthy and strong. Paint the image on the inside. And don't let anybody or anything take it out of you. Fight for the vision. Take the word of faith and fight for the vision. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. Tell people you don't care what they think about you at this moment. The vision is alive on the inside. And it shall manifest. Because the word said it would manifest. If I won't doubt, if I won't become indecisive, if I won't lose confidence in the word, it shall come to pass. Mm. We are in an imagination war. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is what you got to understand. We are in an imagination war because the devil builds from the same chamber of creativity, which is your soulless realm. He's building in your soul what he wants to get down in your heart. And if you don't challenge him with the word and the wisdom of God, he's going to build whatever he like and not necessarily what you like. Because he's a thief. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He's a destroyer of dreams and aspirations. Because if you don't want to follow his path, you look at all some of these stars that are speaking out and standing up for America. The, the Hollywood want to get rid of them. Shutting down their business. And I'm saying, praise God, now you can depend on the Lord. Are you there? Second Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Oh, so we got this flesh body, but we do not war like a flesh being. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then look at verse 5. Casting, that means to shoot down, pull down, reject. Oh, any imagination. See, we're in this imagination war. We ought to reject anything that's coming against the imagination we want to build on the inside. You're not supposed to try to figure out why it came. It came to destroy the one you say you want. Mm. He says to shoot it down just like a missile. Aim the word at it and shoot it down. Don't let it linger. Don't let it fly over you for days and weeks because it's trying to find a landing pad. And it's going to be your soul. And you, you incur undue warfare for long periods of time because we want a rest. We won't shoot it down. We're trying to analyze it, and God didn't tell you to analyze it. He said, get rid of it. You don't analyze what is trying to kill you. You do away with it. Find out what he was like after he did. Then you can learn something about it. Ooh, he says, casting down imaginations, casting down imagination. These are things that come to affect your chamber of creativity. But you got to take the job and cast it down. This is not a job for God. He's given us the word. He's given us the sword of the spirit. He's given us his word. You take the word and you shoot it down. 
So if it's still hanging over you, who did not do their job? Okay, you said it. You get what you say. So what you see is what you get. And every high thing, see, there's some things that come that to exalt itself against the what? The knowledge. This is why your, your base have always got to be rooted in the word. Don't try to paint a picture without the word. Because that picture going to be crooked, just like my first handkerchief. It's going to be lopsided. It's going to be missing some stuff. How many of y'all know that when I made that, some stitches missing? You know, the, 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 the uh, sewing machine might have skipped, or I might not have did the corner just right because the image was not fully developed on the inside, but I was gaining momentum. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I, but I kept doing it until the image was so big on the inside, I could see myself doing it right. Mm. And it says, but why? Because it comes to challenge the, the wisdom and the counsel of God. And he says, and you got to bring into captivity. You have to bring it into captivity. This is why you can't lay in the bed and say, woe is me. You got to bring these thoughts into captivity. And you can't change a thought with a thought. You got to get up and say something. And it's not about how you feel. You got to get up and speak that what thus saith the Lord about my situation. The Lord says I'll never be broke another day in my life. I am rich beyond measure. That's what I'm going to say. I have the favor of God on me. That's what I'm going to say. I live the good life. That's what I'm going to say. Because Jesus came to give me life and life more abundantly. I'm not going to sit down and play with that stuff. And then two weeks later, I'm depressed, I'm oppressed, and I don't know why I'm feeling bad in my body. You've been hanging out with those crazy thoughts that's trying to build in your imagination. It's trying to take captive your imagination and build what it wants to build. Ooh. That's why right out the gate in verse 5, it says, shoot it down. Don't let it fly over and stay up there. But bring it into captivity, every thought, to the obedience of Christ. And, and, the, and I, I say this, this must be done because it is after your imagination. And from your chamber of creativity, you will speak life's issues. This is why you have to build the right image. Because from your imagination, you're going to speak your life issues. Proverbs 4, 23, you don't have to turn there. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your imagination. Fight for your imagination. Don't let the devil capture it and then build what he wants to build in your life. Arrest those thoughts and then shoot them down. You're under arrest. I'll arrest you in the blood of Jesus. You will not take my mind nor my imagination. I have dominion over you. And even if your body don't feel like it and your body say, girl, you know you ain't got that kind of dominion. Why are you saying that stuff? That's just for them people over there to acting out. Mm -mm. You say until you see it. And then you keep right on seeing until you get that picture inside of you. Amen. Did you learn anything this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get ready to receive the tithe and the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we, ha we have to change our vocabulary so drastically so that we can work with God. Because that's what he wants. God wants the best for us. And I'm so determined to get his best for me that I don't care who agrees and don't agree. I move past that because I got this image on the inside of me and it's alive. Oh, Jesus. It's alive on the inside of me. And it's working a good work.
and it shall accomplish what God sent it to do. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you for the word, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father God, we thank you for this great covenant called tithing and giving. Now, Jesus, you are the high priest over the tithe and the offering. Therefore, we brought out the whole tithe. We have not demoted the tithes in our hearts. Neither have we transgressed against the tithe, but we have kept the tithe holy, set aside for your use only. Now, we've also brought the offering that you put in our hearts. So cheerfully, joyfully, and hilariously, we sow our seed. Because we know you are the Lord of the harvest. You are the one that calls increase. So with great boldness, we decree and declare that money coming to us. And money is loosed upon us for the cause of this great and wonderful gospel. If you're in agreement, let's tithe and give. Because we got supernatural expectation. If you would like to support Rapture Ministries financially, you can do so online. Go to raptureministries.org and click the give button. There you can give securely through PayPal. If you're one of our local members, be sure to include your CID number and your giving breakdown. We thank you for every gift. You help make all of this possible. Thank you. The principle is actually the foundation, I could say, for receiving all the promises of God. A lot of times Christians don't understand the process. What time is it? It's harvest time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we're so grateful that you made us partakers of this end time harvest. What an honor and a privilege it is to work with you. Now we pronounce and announce it upon ourselves that we are the righteousness of God. Therefore, we are entitled to covenant kindness and covenant favor. The favor of God is among the righteous. The favor of God surrounds the righteous. Therefore, it surrounds us everywhere we go and in everything we do. We expect the favor of God to be in full manifestation in our lives. Never again, never again will we be without the favor of God. It rests richly upon us. It profusely abounds in us. We are part of the generation that is experiencing God's favor immeasurably. Ha, 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 glory, limitlessly and surpassingly. Therefore, favor is producing in me supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, recognition, prominence, preferred treatment, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won in which we do not have to fight. The favor of God is on us and goes before us. Therefore, our lives will never be the same. Ah, oh, bless your name. Because this is the hour, the time of God's divine favor in our lives. So we thank you, Lord, because that's just your favor. We bless you, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We want to thank every person joining us this morning by uh, social media. God bless you. We're looking forward to seeing you right here Wednesday night. Come on, be a part of this service where God is going to do something radical. And now starting in October, the first Wednesday, which is the 7th, we're going to be doing a panel with Minister Dale Davis Jr. and Minister Jalen Barnes, uh, Jalen Barnes. I got ready to call his whole name out, but Jalen Barnes, <laughs> that's my son-in-law. And we're gonna teach and train you from a biblical perspective, how you should believe about what's happening in our world. I want you to be ready. So set yourself time and give yourself time to hear that. That's gonna be every Wednesday in the month of October. So coming soon, come on, be a part of us. Amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Now, we don't want you to miss when we go live again. So sign up for Rapture Go. Text the Rapture to 797979. Again, it's the word Rapture to 797979. We'll send you a text message the very next time we go live. Now, if you don't live in the United States, instead go to our website, raptureministries.org, and sign up for our mailing list, and we'll let you know the next time we go live with a new broadcast. Thank you for watching.